Now that you've done the DNA extraction lab with the strawberries, your students can see what DNA looks like. And DNA is actually the uncondensed genetic material, but in order for a cell to do something with that material, it has to package it up. So we're gonna talk about chromosomes today and how chromosomes can lead to traits that you would physically see that are passed down from the parents to the offspring. And we're gonna use this in activity with Punnett squares and it involves M&Ms and so students are bound to enjoy it. So in order to do this activity justice, you have to make sure the students understand the terms and it's easier to put a visual with this to get them started. DNA, like we said, is the uncondensed genetic material and a cell is going to have this genetic material in this form for most of its life. DNA is like yarn thrown on the floor in a big ball. There's no rhyme or reason to it. But when it's ready to do something with this genetic material, mitosis or meiosis are two processes you probably talk about later. They take the DNA and they wrap it up tightly into these chromosomes, which are condensed genetic material. And this helps them get the message to the next location more effectively. Here is the chromosome I used yarn today to show you guys kind of what we're talking about here. Once that DNA is packaged tightly, let's pretend it makes an X. This is a good shape to think about. And this dotted line shows that this X is divided in half. The centromere holds both halves together. But in order to make sure that the genetic material gets to the right spot, they package it so much so that it will line up with what we are looking at. For example, these alleles, two alleles make a gene. And the genes code for traits like eye color. So for this example, big B and little b are the letters that code for eye color. Now that you know the parts of a chromosome, we put together the chromosome on the plate for the dad. And on each allele, he has a blue ribbon tied to the bottom of each half of the chromosome. And that is for eye color. So today we're gonna to pretend like dad has blue eye color and that is dominant over the eye color mom has, which we'll get to in a second. But in order to show the dominant besides on the yarn, maybe on paper, big B is what we're gonna to use today. Big B is for dominant. So anytime you use a capital letter, that shows a dominant trait and eye color today for dad blue is dominant over what mom has. So big B, big B means on each allele, he is having a dominant letter or a dominant trait together that's going to be exhibited on dad for blue eyes. Big B, big B, because there's two of them, means homozygous dominant. So those are a couple more terms that you're gonna have to make sure you keep straight. Homozygous means two of the same, Dominant means big letters. He will be represented with blue M&Ms today because blue is dominant. For mom, on the other hand, like I said, mom doesn't have blue eyes. She ends up having green eyes. And green is actually what we call recessive, meaning that it does not show up if there is blue present because blue dominates. So the only way to get the green eyes to show up on mom is if both alleles are coding for the green eyes. And since it is not dominant, it's called recessive, it's a little letter or lowercase. So like I said, if there was a big B present, mom would not have green eyes. The big B would dominate or that blue eyes would show up. So little b, little b, she is homozygous recessive in order to have green eyes and she will be represented with the green M&Ms today. Now that you know the parents' genotypes or what letters represent for their genes, you are ready to do your Punnett square, which is the fun activity of seeing all the possibilities that the offspring could have based on the options that the parents could give for these alleles. The first thing you want to do is to write down the genotypes, just so you don't forget. You already worked through it, it's good in your brain. So the genotypes are the letters. So dad, if we think back, dad was big B, big B, 
And mom, if we think back, was little b, little b. So now we know that is what they have as far as genetics to offer for their offspring. We gotta figure out the cross. So if the cross is dad and mom to get the offspring, it's big B, big B, cross, little b, little b, okay? And that shows me exactly what I'm gonna need for my Punnett square, which I put on a separate sheet of paper to make it easier, hopefully, to visualize over here. So on my Punnett square, we call this a monohybrid cross. Since I usually think of the dad being taller, we'll put the dad's alleles, or another way to think about it is gametes. That's another term that they use sometimes in genetics on this part of the square, the top. And then the mom or the female, her alleles or her gametes go on the left side because usually a female is shorter. So that's how I remember it. And since we're using M&Ms today, we know that dad is gonna be blue M&Ms and mom is gonna be green M&Ms, okay? So the fourth step, once we know that our square is all set up and ready to rock and roll, is we need to split these gametes from the genotype. So we split them into gametes. And you might be asking, what the heck are you talking about for gametes? Well, think about it this way. You get half your genetic information from dad and half from mom. So half of the offspring's genetic information comes from the sperm and half of the genetic information comes from the egg. So gametes are like the eggs and the sperms, okay? So if I'm gonna split the genotypes into gametes, it's pretty much like taking my big B, big B, and cutting it in half. Or my little B, little B, and cutting it in half. Let's show this with our M&Ms. So this is mom, right? Mom is the green. This is dad, dad is the blue but I need to split them in half so the baby gets half from mom and half from dad. So I put two cups up here actually, and split dad's in half, put two cups on the left, and split mom's in half. Now their genotypes are split into gametes so I can get half from mom and half from dad. Okay, the fifth step will be to fill in the Punnett square. And what does that mean? That's pretty much telling me all the options for the offspring. So I need four more solo cups. Just to make life easier, I put them in the squares and they keep my M&Ms from rolling away. And if you get half from dad and half from mom, this cup should have two colors in it. So the baby is a whole and the baby is ready to grow and develop. So half from mom, half from dad. That's why I get two colors in this cup half from mom, half from dad. Same thing for this side, half from dad, half from mom, put them together in the cup. So hopefully I'm not confusing you, I'm going kind of fast here. Pretty much mom and dad, each donate half, mom and dad. So the babies end up with two M&Ms in their cups because originally the mom and dad had two M&Ms, right? We just split them in half. So the sixth step that you want to do is pretty much summarize your results. And what does that mean by results? What are the options for the babies? So now I'm only focused with these four squares in the middle that have two M&Ms in them because that's a baby that's complete. That's the offspring that is ready to grow and develop. And this is a pretty easy one. They all look the same. They all end up with a big B and a little B, or they all end up with a blue and a green. So there's four big B, little Bs. Those are my four options. They all were the same. Or 100% blue eyes. And you might be saying, what? How do you know it's 100%? Remember that big dominant trait, the big letter, is recorded or showing by a blue M&M. So any cup that has a blue M&M in it, the blue is gonna dominate, it's gonna show up. And so these are 100% blue eyes, 
They are big B, little B. And if you're really curious, what does that mean? Because the parents were homozygous dominant, the offspring are heterozygous. Hetero means they have one of each color. So they carry a trait for green, but really the blue is what is expressed. And this is how you do a Punnett square, it's really fun. And after the kids do all the six steps, show it on their paper to get their credit, you can let them eat the M&Ms. Now that the students have done their six steps to the Punnett squares, let's visualize what the chromosome will look like for the offspring. We said from the square that the offspring would be big B, little b, because dad only had big B's to offer and mom only had little b's to offer, so the offspring ends up being heterozygous. And this is the blue allele, and this is the green allele, and together, like we said, half from mom, half from dad makes the whole picture or the whole chromosome for the offspring. So this is how it is recorded on the square with the two different color M&Ms, and this is how it's written on paper for the genotype. Genotype is the letters, phenotype is the physical or what you're gonna see, and you end up seeing blue eye on this offspring even though it's carrying around the green trait. It's just hidden. So if your students are feeling comfortable with the six steps on the Punnett squares, then you could go one step farther and say, okay, if this baby grows up, this offspring is going to reproduce with a mate, what if it was kind of like the same genetics as the dad? What if it was a genotype of big B, big B, which would be these color M&Ms, and you could have the student do the Punnett square with these two options, splitting up the genotype into different gametes. You're gonna end up with different um, results for your summarizing. You'll end up with genotypes and phenotypes being different, different percentages, because now you have a homozygous dominant and a heterozygous. One step farther, maybe you wanna try it with a homozygous recessive. And so this offspring, let's say, had a baby with this mate, and this one has the green trait, so it's homozygous recessive, and you're definitely gonna get different genotypes and phenotypes on this one than you would with homozygous dominant because different letters, different combinations, but it is a fun thing to play around with. This is called a monohybrid cross with one trait. The trait was eye color, and it's really fun activity after the kids do all the work, all the steps, you let them eat their M&Ms.